Phase One have just released Capture One Pro 12, and in today's episode, I'm going to take you through all the new features and show you some of the really cool additions that Phase One have added. If you're anything like me, then you use Capture One on a daily basis. So when Phase One update it, it's kind of a big deal. Now, before we get going, I'm just gonna grab this bit of paper and quickly run you through all the new features that we have, and then we'll go into Capture One and I'll show them all to you. I'll show you the most important ones anyway. There's no point showing you everything. So there's a new user experience, a new user interface. It all looks a little bit different. Um, you'll see that immediately when we jump straight in. Uh, support for new cameras with new updates, that always kind of happens. So I've had a few people messaging me about like the Canon mirrorless cameras and when they'll be supported. They are, I believe, now supported, so you can use them in Capture One. Um, plugins, so in this new version of Capture One, they're making the SDK uh, more accessible for developers. So that means that developers are gonna be able to more easily create plugins for Capture One. That sounds pretty cool. I'm not sure exactly what that means immediately, but it sounds like there could be some interesting things in the works. Um, for me, I'm hoping that that means there might be a possibility that the Color Checker Passport plugin, which they have in Lightroom, will then be supported in Capture One, because that'll be pretty cool. Um, Fuji Film Film Simulation. Um, so if you shoot on Fuji, I think, I don't shoot Fuji, but I think inside the cameras, they have like these presets where you can emulate Fuji Film Film. Um, that's hard to say. Fuji Film Film. Uh, anyway, so they have them inside the cameras, and now you can do those same things inside of Capture One. At least that's what I think, anyway. Um, then there's extended Apple Script support. I, sh I use Windows, so this doesn't really affect me, but if you use Apple Script, then that's quite cool. There's extra things you can do there. Um, intelligent adjustments copying. Now, currently, when you make adjustments to an image inside Capture One, and then you go copy and paste to another image, um, it'll automatically select the adjustments that you've made, uh, and then paste them onto the next image. Um, the intelligent adjustments adjustments copying kind of just sounds the same, um, but it ignores spot removal and crop automatically, which a lot of the time you don't want to transfer over. Um, so, I mean, that kind of seemed to be all that it was. I'm probably missing something. There's probably something else there, but I'll investigate that more and we can have a look at another time. The most interesting changes though are all to masks. They've added luminosity masks. Um, you can display your mask in grayscale. There's radial masks and gradient mask improvements. And all of these are, are pretty amazing actually, especially the luminosity mask bit. So we're gonna jump into Capture One now and I'll show you all of this stuff. Right away, I think the most obvious changes are to the way Capture One actually looks. If you're familiar with Capture One, then this isn't really gonna be a huge change for you, but you will notice that some of the text has got a bit bigger, some of the icons have changed, some of the menu items in here will have changed a little bit, but for the most part, if you're familiar with Capture One, then this will be absolutely fine and really easy to get your head around. If you're not familiar with Capture One, then make sure you check out my series, which is on teaching you Capture One. I kind of take you through all of it step by step and show you exactly how the program works. Aside from the obvious user interface changes, there are other little uh, changes to the user experience. So in the past, when you wanted to change a keyboard shortcut, you'd have to go here, search through all these bits, and then try and find the key you wanted to change. Now, if you know the name of it, you can search for it up here and then change it from there, so it's a little bit easier. Other than that, there've been kind of the standard improvements to speed and camera support that I was talking about earlier, which you get in all new releases of Capture One. In addition, we have the plugins that I was talking about earlier. If you go to edit and then preferences, they, you won't see any plugins at the moment. This will be where you add them and this is the area where all of them will be stored. As I mentioned, I'm hoping there's gonna be support for the Color Checker Passport, um, I believe other plugins like Helicon Focus we're gonna be able to have over here as well. Um, so I'll wait and see what actually happens with this area, but this hopefully could be potentially very cool. Now let's get into some of the more interesting parts of this new update. So this is luminosity masks, the changes they've made to radial masks and to the gradient masks. Now, if you're not familiar with luminosity masks, it's what a lot of uh, landscape and architectural photographers will use. Essentially, it's creating masks on layers by using the luminance values of your image. So you might only want to adjust the brightest parts of your image or the shadows in a particular range or the highlights in a particular range and luminosity masks allows you to do that. So let me demonstrate. Now I have this image that I took quite a long time ago 
Um, as you can see, it's a very, very foggy image. So I'm just gonna make a couple of very quick adjustments before we get going, um, because with it being so foggy, it can be a little bit uh, tricky to edit. So let's just make a few little quick adjustments. I'm just gonna add quite a strong curve. And that's just due to the fog. I would not recommend doing this with most images. Cool, okay, and then a little bit of clarity just to make it pop a little bit more. Great, okay, so I mean that, that actually looks quite nice already. But let's say that we just want to adjust the sky area up here. Now we go to our layers panel, and if we click here, we can create a new layer. We can name it, I'm not gonna do that for the minute. If we right click and go to fill mask, and I hit M, you'll see that the mask covers the entire image. Now this is where our luminosity mask section is contained. If I click luma range, it brings up this dialog. We have this section, which allows us to refine our selection. Um, so this would be the shadow side and this would be the highlight side. Now you can see the mask is adjusting as I move these points. Let me just move them back. So here we have our top two toggles um, and this is gonna, if you look at the kind of numerical values up here, this is gonna decide where our mask kind of begins on the shadow side and then where it begins on the highlight side. Um, so the top of the highlights over here is gonna be the brightest parts of our image and the bottom of the shadows over here are gonna be the darkest parts of our image. So let's say if I only wanna select the sky, then I would drag this out until most of the darker foreground is no longer selected. You see it's starting to go into the sky now, but I'm not too worried about that. Say about there. And now this here allows us to kind of feather the selection. Um, it, if you dragged it all the way back, you see how it's um, it's selecting some of what was there, but as it moves up here, that says it's kind of selecting more of this final range. So that is at 178, and this would be like a gradual build up to 178, whereas this would be a much harder stop. So if I just pull this out a little bit, and maybe move that over a touch more, there we can see we have the sky relatively well selected. Now here, radius and sensitivity, I'm just gonna click apply and then zoom in so you can really see what's going on here. So this helps you refine your edge. So if I hit Luma range again, radius, as you increase it, you'll see the effect it has here. It starts to kind of select more pixels around our edge. So if I, in this case, if I bring it up to something like 21 and then sensitivity if i bring that all the way down then it's trying to select the edge in a much harder sort of fashion if i bring it oh sorry other way around <laughs> if i bring it all the way down then it's softening that edge and if you bring it all the way up then it's trying much harder to kind of keep a hard edge around some of these buildings and some of these trees and things um so you just have to kind of mess around here find out what's working best for your image for this one I don't want too soft an edge because that'll give us halos. Um, so I'm gonna say hmm, something around there looks all right. Okay, so now we have our selection made and I can make some adjustments. So I hit M to get rid of that. And now we can change, you know, we can add any of our adjustments as you usually would do to a layer inside of Capture One. So I can darken our sky a little bit and then maybe add tiny bit of contrast, darken the darks a bit more and get the brights a bit brighter. And there we go, we've made a really easy adjustment and a really targeted adjustment. And you can see it is affecting the buildings a little bit here. And with our mask, it's not affecting these areas too much. So we can edit our mask further. If I hit B for the brush tool and I wanna paint in some more of this area and I try and do that now, you'll see it's not working. Um, however, if I hit E for the eraser tool, I can erase some of the mask. And then if I hit B again, I can actually paint the mask back in. But what you'll notice here is that I'm actually limited to how the mask was originally created. So I'm not able to paint anything down here or over here. I can't add to the mask. If I want to add to the mask, then you have to right click and go to rasterize. Now this is actually really cool because it allows you to 
to work within your mask um, and create exactly the look you want. So you could create your luminosity, luminosity mask and then decide I don't want it over in this area and you can be quite rough with your erasing and your brushing because you're only working within the parameters that you already had of your mask. So that aside, if I right click here and go to rasterize and then I can then paint in the sky up here, which I want for this image because I want all the sky to be affected. And then if I wanted to, I could hit E and then just take it away a little bit from these buildings. I mean, this is very rough. I'm not trying to make a nice image here. I just want to show you guys these new features. So there we go. We have a nice mask created and that's fantastic. Another great thing about luminosity masks is you can actually apply them to other masks. So let's say uh, we want to add a gradient. So I go to the gradient tool and I hold shift so that it makes a, a nice straight one. So I hold shift does that and I add a gradient. Hit M and that's the gradient that I've created. Um, if I just, what do you want to do with this? Uh, let's say I want to, I don't know. Let's say I want to brighten my foreground a little bit uh, and also add a little bit of contrast to it. No. I don't know, let's go to curves, brighten it a tad and darken some of it there. Brighten the midtones, darken the shadows. There we go. So I want to do that, but I only want it to be affecting the bottom part of my image. At the minute, the gradient mask actually did a pretty good job, um, but let's just make it harder. Oops. Let's just make it a little bit harder and adjust that again. So let's make this a little bit worse. So let's say I go like that, but I only want it to be affecting the bottom part of my image, not the top part. You can hit uh, the luminosity mask again and then further refine a selection you've already made. Now this I absolutely love. So if I say that I don't want it to be in the highlights, I can just drag it away we could just go like that or something. Hit apply. And there we go. We have this really, really great selection that has been made. Obviously, it hasn't made a, a fantastic difference to the image. It does look quite a bit better. I like what it's done to the trees over here. But I just think it's fantastic that you can adjust uh, a mask you've already created. So let's just delete that and let's create another one. So I want to show you, this is one of the new uh, things they've done, one of the new features. Um, ooh, let's not do that. There we go, new layer. So we create a new gradient. I'm just gonna darken this so you can see what's going on. Um, in the past, when you were creating gradients inside of Capture One, there wasn't that much you could actually do. All you could do was draw a little line and then you couldn't really adjust it again. You could move it, but that was it. Now, now I've created this, we have all these different controls. So we can adjust the actual feather of the whole mask. If I just hit M, then you can see what's going on a bit better. You can adjust the feather of the whole mask. You can rotate it if you want. If you hold shift, it will rotate in 45 degree increments. Um, you can also hold Alt, and then that will adjust just one side of the mask. So you can do asymmetrical masks. So let's say you had like a horizon perfectly and you just wanted a, gra a gradient just going from the bottom of the horizon up, you can do that really easily with this. Um, you can also, if you hold shift, you can then adjust both at the same time as you usually would uh, around the kind of center point. So if I let go of shift, it moves the whole thing. But let's say if I've found my center point and I want it to be there, I can hold shift and it will stay adjusting around that point. So that's really cool. That's a really, really nice way of doing gradient masks. Now the next new mask we have is the radial mask. This is probably something you'll be quite familiar with in uh, Lightroom, but now we have something very similar inside of Capture One. So again, if we just create another new layer, I'm just gonna hide these ones. Um, and we'll click down here, hold down, and go to Draw Radial Gradient Mask. 
So if I draw this out, if you're familiar with Lightroom, then you're probably gonna be quite familiar with this. Um, so we have these three circles and each one does something slightly different. Uh, the first one is like the main area of our adjustment. That's where most of the focus is going to be made. These four little toggles that we have, these four little control points allow us to change the shape. So we can make it longer or wider. We can also hold down, I think, Alt here. Yeah, if you hold down Alt, that will lock the opposite adjustment point. So you see that one is now not moving, whereas if I don't hold down Alt, then you can move them both at the same time. If you hold down Shift, then it locks the actual shape of the whole thing. So we could say that, I don't know, we like this shape, and then I hold down Shift, and I'll make it bigger or smaller in that particular shape. So let's say like that, there we go. And then this last uh, circle on the outside will adjust the feather. So if I pull that out, you can see the feather gets a little bit larger, the whole thing gets a bit bigger. And that's great. And if you want to adjust the rotation, if you just hover your mouse over the middle part here, you can do that as well. So there we go. And then let's just say we want to take the exposure down. Something weird like that. <laughs> there we go. So that's the new radial gradient tool. Finally, we have a new way of actually viewing our mask. So in the past, we would have always had to have used uh, M, as I've been showing you already. You hit M, toggle M on and off, and you can see the mask like that. Now, if you hold down here, we can go to display grayscale mask. And this is gonna be a lot more familiar for people who are used to Photoshop and masking in Photoshop. You can now do it in this way as well. Another quick thing to note about the new masking functions inside of Capture One is the way that they copy from image to image. So let's just change this back to the standard mask like that. And if you're familiar with Capture One, then you know that as you're tethering your camera and you're capturing images, um, then the adjustments that you've applied to your first image will then be applied to the second image. They'll be copied over in the third and the fourth. And as you make more adjustments, it keeps changing as you do it. So if one of those adjustments was a luminosity mask, what actually happens is Capture One analyzes the parameters that you've used to create that luminosity mask and will create a new mask based on those parameters for the next image. So instead of it just copying, let's say, this mask that we have here to the next image, it will create a new mask based on these parameters, uh, which, well, not based on those because I rasterized this layer, but you know, you get what I mean. It'll create a new mask based on that. So it'll always be accurate, which is really fantastic. That's it for today. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video on the new features inside of Capture One. I think they're fantastic. I think there's some great new additions that have been added and I can't wait to start using them myself. If you do decide to upgrade, then make sure you use my discount code because that'll give you 10% off. Uh, I'll link to that inside the description and I'll pin it as a comment at the top so you guys know exactly what to use. Um, if you have any questions, pop them down in the comments. If you want to learn more about Capture One, then check out some of my other videos if you want to learn how the program works. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss anything in the future. All right, guys, thanks. I'll catch you later.